Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee and you can find me at creativelyyours.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and super excited, yes, that you are here with me today for a little bit of paper crafting fun. Yay! I have a great project in store for you today. So before we jump in, let me remind you of a few things. First, you want to sign up for my email list if you are not already on there. That is the only way to keep up with everything that's going on. And I always have things going on that you do not want to miss. So I'll do a quick reminder here. Today is April 30th. Can you believe it? The end of April. So last day of the month means a few last chance items. Number one, the last chance list is ending. So there are still fabulous items discounted up to 60% off on the list. So definitely go out to the online store and, uh, and shop those items. Don't miss out on those. We do have a new catalog starting tomorrow, May 1st, and there's some price increases happening with some, uh, staple items, some card stocks and whatnot. So you definitely wanna stock up on those items while you are shopping. It also means it's the very last day to, to grab your favorite items from my personal crafty stash as part of my awesome April event. So yes, every $25 you spend before shipping and tax, you get to choose some goodies from my stash. And I have lots and lots of goodies for you to choose from. So again, today is the last day. So don't miss out on that. Um, I do have registration open for my in color club. If you want to make sure you get this first round, today is the day that you want to sign up if you haven't done so already. Um, I'm gonna be placing orders um, right away and uh, when the catalog starts. So you will get your goodies this month, right? Well, May, almost this month, right? Uh, and then catalog shares. I have uh, openings for catalog shares as well. So it's designer paper and then you can add the ribbon as a bonus. And then you unlock extra gifts as well, which is awesome. So good, good stuff there. So get signed up for that as well. Technically, that registration is going to close May 5th. Um, but I am going to order um, for those that are paid right away when the catalog starts so that we don't miss out. So I may have to close registration early if uh, papers sell out. But this is a two-month um, thing for the share. So I may be able to just switch things around and still make it work. So that should all be good. Okay, so today what I'm going to show you is a sneak peek of the bonus project that I am going to be putting into the May Cultivated Creativity DIY Paper Crafting Kit as my thank you. So every month I add in an extra project. Um, you get the bonus tutorial as well. And it's just a little thank you, right? The card isn't necessarily a thank you. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. But it's my way of giving you a little extra something uh, by putting a little handmade project in there um, and appreciating you for your support and all that fun stuff. So that's what we're going to do today. So this month's Cultivated Creativity is going to feature the Simply Zinnia Suite, which is one of our online exclusives. So that's not even featured in a catalog but there are so many amazing products in this suite. It's bright, it's cheerful, it's perfect for this time of year, right? Spring, summer, festive. You can see a few of them. Sneak peek behind me. You can see a few of the projects uh, behind there. There will be a sneak peek video that goes live. I believe it's tomorrow, yes. So you'll be able to see all of that on my YouTube channel. All right, let's go ahead and switch over and get to our crafty fun, shall we? Okay, so as I mentioned, we are featuring the Simply Zinnia uh, product suite in this month's, in our May Cultivated Creativity uh, DIY Paper Crafting Kit. And I love this one. It's, it's so much fun. And the great thing is, is if you are like, okay, I have way too many flowers. I don't need any more flowers. Use what you've got at home, right? I think these flowers are amazing. Um, I love the sentiments in this set. Um, the paper and whatnot goes with this is fabulous. And of course, I love the dyes. Um, could you use other dyes as well, floral dyes? Sure, you definitely could, right? All right, so today's project, as I mentioned, is the bonus project that's going to be in each of the kits. Isn't that great? I love this. So it's a monochromatic um color scheme. And so I've pulled that right off my color wheel that's in my catalog to be able to pull this together. So this is, um, let's see, Berry Burst, Petunia Pop, Bubble Bath, and Fresh Freesia. And then we're pulling in a little bit of Daffodil Delight and Lemon Lolly um, to finish off our lovely flower. And then we've got our little sentiment that we're going to mask. So 
Um, so hopefully you like this one. So I'm gonna show you how to make this. Um, if I didn't mention it to you before, which I might not have, I might have forgotten. Um, I am live with you. If you are watching this premiere video, then I am live with you in the chat. So please let me know if you've got any questions on anything. Let me know you're here, where you're from. I'm excited that you're here joining me. Um, so we can just kind of chat in the chat, right? While the video is going. And of course, if you're watching me on the replay, then leave me a comment. Let me know if you've got any questions. I'd love to know um, what you guys are thinking, right? And don't forget, if you love the projects that I'm sharing, give me a thumbs up and share it with your crafty friends. I would love for them to join us on Tuesdays at 1230 Eastern. All right, so let's start off with our card base. So I've got a thick basic white card base and I have embossed the front of this with the Basics 3D embossing folder, all right? Now, I believe in the US, as I am showing you, this may not be available any longer. It may have sold out. This was another one of our online exclusives. I will have to double check that, but I do believe that this possibly is sold out. So hopefully you have this one. Um, and if not, you could change it up and use what makes your heart happy. So I've embossed the front of this card base. Love it, love it, love it. Now, I think for this card, you actually could do the whole card base if you wanted to run it through both times. Um, because that might be kind of a fun way to um, add a little texture to the inside. But that's entirely up to you. All right, I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to start with our focal point here. So I've got a piece of da -da -da, two and a half by two and a half basic weight. And then I've got four little squares that are one and an eighth by one and an eighth. Okay, so I'm going to adhere these squares right down to this layer. Now I'm going to use my stamp and seal. You could use liquid glue if you prefer. And I'm not going to push down hard because I want to get my squares kind of laid out first. So this may be where you would prefer to do liquid glue. You just need to make sure that you can get back in there before that glue sets is the issue, right? That you might run into. So I am just going to tack these down with a little bit of stamp and seal. I'm going to do all four of these. So I've left a little bit of a border around the edge. And of course, I may not have all my layers cut perfectly even. Do you guys have that issue as well? We don't always get it 100%, um, you know, but that's okay. That's, it's paper crafting, right? All right, I'm going to slide this one down a little bit because I'm finding my spacing is not so even. So let's pop this one up. So this is part of the reason I didn't push that down. Okay, and then we're gonna pop that one off too. Now, I'm. this is gonna be forgiving because we're gonna cover up the center of this. So if we end up with things off a little bit in the center, it's all fine, right? I'm gonna go ahead and push those down. I'm committing to those uh, placements, right or wrong. That's what I'm doing, <laughs> right? And of course, I'm not exact on each of my squares. And again, that's okay. Cute, right? Just kind of a fun way to do it. Now, if you if this caused you stress, cut another layer that's two and a quarter by two and a quarter white, and then you could adhere it right to the edges if, if trying to mess with the spacing puts you over the edge, okay? All right, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna work on my floral focal point. So I used this die right here to cut my petals. And I tried a couple of different things and I wanted to share this with you so that you can, um, can learn from my somewhat errors, right? So when I made this original card, you can probably see down in there, there's dimensionals on every one of those little um, petals, right? But I was like, you know, I'd like it to be a little more stable. So I thought, well, I'll cut it out with foam, and foam adhesive. So I put foam adhesive on the back and die cut it. The issue I had with that was that it didn't want to release, and now I've pulled it off and put it back on so many times it doesn't want to work. But it was, it didn't want to release the backing paper. Like, you know, it doesn't always cut all the way through. It does and it doesn't, right? It depends on how many times you run it through. But I didn't have the patience to run it through multiple times. So I did a forward back, that's all I was willing to do. But then I found this really hard to work with as far as cutting these apart, right? So I decided that this was not the way to go. So instead, I just die cut the flower right out of the foam adhesive, right? Like this, which I think works fabulously, okay? And then I, it's, I just adhered this right to this, this uh, 
layer. Now I'm actually gonna build it and then adhere it onto the layer, I think. Um, but you could go either way and you can see I've got some of my flowers cut off. That's okay. This is gonna be super stable because all that is foam, right? So then I die cut my flowers. So I've got one in each of the four colors. So you're actually gonna get four cards out of this and I'm gonna show you that here in just a moment. Okay, so I wanna cut these apart. So I'm gonna take one flower and I'm gonna work with it. And this is what's gonna help me uh, get my guide all worked out. So first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna slide all this out of the way. Let's bring in my paper trimmer. Now you could do this with your snips if you prefer, okay? It's entirely up to you. Now what I wanna do is I wanna come straight across um, to cut that middle part apart but I don't wanna cut that petal. You could totally cut the petal if you wanted to, but I just wanna go straight across. So I'm gonna lay that down and I'm going to cut just that center apart, right? Okay, now I've gotta rotate this because I've gotta cut this again. And here again, I'm trying to pick a spot that's in the middle and that's hopefully square, right? Let's, let's make sure we're square. Let's put that up on one of our lines on our trimmer so we know that we're straight. And then I can cut these. Now the other way I could do it is I could do one at a time, right? And butt it up against, like if this is making you feel more comfortable, you could do it that way, right? So I could butt that up like that. So the only thing is, is that you have to make sure that you are cutting this in the same spot, right? That you cut that because otherwise that doesn't work so well, right? So let me, so this rotates it, that's the, that's the bad part. Let's see if I can, uh, I'm just gonna lay this back in here and lay this down. You can mark this with a pencil um, if that makes you feel better about it. I actually, let me do that. Let me mark it with a pencil. And then that way I know where this is. We'll just go ahead and lay this down see how it's not centered? I don't have it totally centered. I have it offset. So let's do that. We'll put that right there and hopefully this will be close enough. And again, I'm going to cut it and I'm gonna stop so that I don't cut into that pedal because I don't want that pedal cut. All right, we'll see how I did. Let's get our trimmer out of the way. Because we don't really need to do each one that way. It's the first one that's the hardest, right? So let's put this back together and see what we've got. So that's my top, that's my bottom here. And then let's see, that's this one and this one. So that's, I'm ha I'm pretty happy with that. I'm, I, that looks pretty good to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I am going to clip each one of these. Now, it might've been easier to do it before I clipped all four parts, right? I could have done it so that I had them all done at once, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go the in half, right? Best that I can here. And again, they don't have to be perfect, right? So let's do the in half. And I'm not gonna use that as the guide for this right now. Let's, let's just use this one that's easier to use, right? And we're gonna clip each one of these at that in half. Okay, one more. It sounds more complex than it really is. And I might be making it look harder than it needs to be, unfortunately. Uh, okay. All right, so there's those, there's those. So now I need to clip these in half. So I can just take one of these. I don't need both. And I can use this as a guide again, just lining those petals up and clipping that. So then my top two are good, okay. And then let's do the next two colors as well. Now I've done these tone on tone. You could shift it and make it different if you want to. That's entirely up to you. Okay. And I'm kind of keeping my parts separate and kind of so that I know where they go. So it's a little easier to put it back together. Okay, so I've got those four. So now I need to do the same thing. I need to take this and line it up with one or the other, doesn't matter which one, as long as I'm consistent, right, with what I'm doing. Well, that wasn't lined up at all. 
All right, so that's that one. That goes there. This one's going to go here. Okay. And you can always use the, um, the die as a guide if you're not sure which petals go where, right? All right, one more. I should have done this ahead of time, right? But I wanted you guys to see this because this is this is the hard part, right, of the whole card, is taking whatever image you use, be it a flower or something else if you prefer, it's clipping it into fours, right? So the cool thing I think about this is that you're going to get four cards out of this, right? So let me kind of do my quadrants. So if I put that color there and that color there, and that color there, and then that color there, right? Now, if I rotate my card, so my squares are like that, then my next one is going to be this, and then bubble bath, right? And then my freesia and my berry, right? Okay, and then I can rotate it again and do the same thing. My bubble, my freesia, my berry, and my petunia pop, okay? So there's that one. And then this should be what's left, right? I should be able to rotate this again and I really don't even have to think about that because that's all that's left, right? Awesome. So you can do four cards out of one. So we're just going to pick one of these. Doesn't matter which one, except for, no, it doesn't matter which one, okay? So now I just need to adhere the pieces to the card. So I'm. let's just do this one that's, that's first. It doesn't matter, really. So I'm going to peel off this backing paper. Now, if your backing paper falls off the back of it, you can totally use your silicone craft sheet for that. Now, this is a little bit tricky to work with because it's super sticky. Um, and again, if you're having trouble with it, grab your silicone craft sheet and you're just going to lay this right down on that die cut foam. Now, if handling this makes it crazy, go ahead and peel this backing off, right? Bring in your silicone craft sheet, plop that down, it'll peel right back off. But I didn't get that very straight, right? So this will make it a little easier because now I can lay this down right on those petals and it's not sticking to my hands. And I didn't get this very even in the center. Again, I'm not gonna let that stress me out, right? It's okay if it's off a little bit because we're gonna cover that center up anyway. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so there's my flower, it's a little ugly. It's okay if it's a little ugly. And we're gonna take our center that we die cut. I used this die here for the Daffodil Delight, and then I used this one for the Lemon Lolly. So I've got a Daffodil Delight center that I am just going to adhere on with a little bit of liquid glue. Okay, we'll just cover, see we just covered all of that up. So no big deal. And then I've got my Lemon Lolly. So on the back, I'm gonna put some adhesive, but before I do that, Let's bring in our Wink of Stella. Wink of Stella's back in stock, or at least it was last I looked. I just ordered a whole bunch of them. Um, for Cultivated Creativity, I give a gift every six months that someone is an active member. So six months in a row, uh, then you get a gift from me. And one of my gifts I do includes a Wink of Stella when they're in stock. I haven't been able to do that uh, the past few months. All right, so a little liquid glue on there. We're gonna let that dry just a second. I don't have the patience. And then we're just gonna lay this down. So we've got that lovely detail with that Wink of Stella on it. All right, I need to stop touching it and let that dry for just a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. So I do, um, when I go to put my square down, I am gonna wanna build that before I go too crazy. But let's go ahead and pull in our layer that's gonna go on the front of our card. I'm gonna use this square as a guide for our, our placement of our sentiment, right? All right, so I am using Blackberry Bliss, and this is the sentiment. Sending flowers and thinking of you. Well, I only want the thinking of you. 
So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mask it. So I've got a piece of painter's tape. You can use whatever tape you've got. You can use uh, washi tape, works really well. Any kind of removable tape you wanna use, any household tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask off what I don't want. I only want the thinking of you. I'm gonna ink this up in my Blackberry Bliss ink, right? So that's all inked up. Now, I have to remove this tape before I stamp or I'm gonna get that blob of ink right there. And then I am going to, I don't have that adhered down and I did that intentionally because I want to be able to uh, adjust this as needed. Perfect, so I got my Thinking of You stamped, which worked out fabulously. So now this should be dry enough that I can just literally peel, well, it's not dry enough. I may have to add some more adhesive to that center. All right, so now I can take this flower and lay it right down on my square. Now, if you wanna turn it so that it overlaps on the, you know, like just peeks over, like some of the petals peek over, you can totally do that. You don't have to, it's up to you. And I'm just going to push that down. And there we go, we have our beautiful focal point. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. And then I'm going to adhere this onto my card front with some dimensionals as well. Now if that's too much popping up for you, just put it on with some, some regular adhesive. You don't have to pop this up. I like it this way. I don't think it's asking too much to have two layers of pop up, right? I like four, actually, <laughs> if we're gonna be honest here, right? All right, so we got that. And then you can kind of decide, do you like where your sentiment is? Um, do you like the spacing? Do you want a little closer, a little further? So actually adhering this on after the fact gives you a little bit of adjustment potential there, okay? And then this is going to adhere just right on front of our card base. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Not a hard card at all but some really fun interest with that, that focal point there. All right, so let's grab our lovely sequins here. So this is Adhesive Back Sequins Trio. Now you could use the pink ones or the white ones out of this, I think. You could use the peacock ones if you wanted to, but I might switch my color combination if I did that. So I am just gonna grab a couple of them since there's one since there's one white one on here, I'm gonna steal that just to finish it off that sheet. And I'm not even in camera, here we go. We're gonna put one there, and then we're gonna put a second one right there. So, isn't that fun? It's simple, it's beautiful. A white card with a pop of color, too, too fun. And then for the card inside, I kept it really simple. So this is where I was saying, I think it would be fun to um, emboss the entire card base. So for the inside, again, I wanted to keep it super simple. So I am just going to adhere that white layer in. I'm not gonna add anything else. I really wanted that white, just that white on white, elegant appearance. And then this is leaving room. You know, you can use a thinking of you for so many different occasions. So I want my guests to be able to use this how they want to use it. So I did not stamp the inside and that's gonna give them a little bit more flexibility. Nice, do you guys love it? I hope so, I hope you'll give something like this a try. I'd love to see what other images you put in the center here um, when you're making yours. So, all right, so remember, Cultivated Creativity registration is open until May 20th for the Simply Zinnia kit, and you will not want to miss it. It's fantastic. We've got some fun surprises always in those kits every month. And I would love for you to join us. All right. Thanks so much. And I hope to see you again for some more crafty fun next Tuesday. Bye for now.